Good evening, parents and guardians. This is Steve Murray, principal of the Governor Mifflin High School. The purpose of this communication is to answer questions and clear up any misconceptions, specifically to the high school, as a follow-up to Mr. McKay's message last week. The first thing about school schedules, pre-COVID, is that a schedule at a school must match the instructional objectives, programs, learning opportunities, and daily learning of the school. There are block schedules, eight period days, seven period days, six period days out there that schools currently use. At the Governor Mifflin High School, due to our changing instructional practices and programs and opportunities, pre-COVID, we were moving to a hybrid block schedule to start this school year. There is no perfect schedule out there, and if there was, we would all be using it. So for every school schedule, there are advantages and disadvantages that exist. So taking a look at the schedule we have been running since the first day of school, the advantages. What we really liked about this schedule is that we're offering in-person learning opportunities to our students each day. We're not offering Monday and Tuesday with a Wednesday asynchronous day and then Thursday, Friday online. Throughout this whole school year, our in-person students have been here every single day. Our BCTC students were attending the Career Center, still are, four times a week. Not two times a week, four times a week. Our students can complete their asynchronous work at any time before the next school day, so there's some flexibility. There's also flexibility with the internship program, school to work, and jobs. But most importantly, our students have class each day. So how it's currently working, an A through L morning in-person student, if you look at the schedule on the right, they are attending classes from 735 until 1045 in the morning at the Governor Mifflin High School. On a day one, they're attending periods one, two, three, and four. After the lunch break, they go home and they are working on their own to complete their assignments for period five, six, and seven, eight. This is how our students are having class each day. We know that's not necessarily happening. And it is a current disadvantage of the schedule. The asynchronous work has been a disadvantage of our schedule for teachers, students, and parents. Also, we've decreased our overall instructional time because we know the asynchronous work is not taking up 45 minutes. Student academic performance overall has been falling. And in February, we asked our students a bunch of questions about their school uh, learning experiences this year. We did receive 639 responses. Now for the first question, there was about 20 options. They could check multiple options as far as what's currently stressing you out at this time. 576 of them said school. 49% answered the specific question about asynchronous work by saying they strongly agree or agree that they're struggling with their asynchronous work. That really leads us into the adjustment for the end of the school year. The new schedule that begins on March 22nd will increase instructional time for our students, eliminate the asynchronous work and assignments, so parents no longer have to find out how to help their son or daughter with asynchronous math, chemistry, physics, or any other subject. Our students will see their teachers each day, and in-person students continue to attend our school on a daily basis. Any student who is currently online at this time, full time, you will remain online as a virtual student. The only difference is now you will log into each period each day at the time of the class if you have it. Online students do not log in to study hall. So the difference, our online virtual learners, just like our in-person, will now see every teacher every day, but they will have a full synchronous class schedule also removing the asynchronous work. Grade 9, 10, and 11 in-person students. If you're A through L in the morning, you attend in-person classes uh, during the AM session as normal. From 1045 to 1145, that's your transportation home from the AM session. From 1145 to 255 now, each day, you log into the class 
if you have it. Again, study hall, we are not logging into study hall. So you will see every teacher every day. Same with the in-person M through Z, PM students. The only difference, you're now waking up at 7.35 to log into your classes. You do report to the school at the same exact time, and you still uh, continue to attend in-person classes for the PM session. Our senior students, if you're online full-time as a senior, you log into your classes throughout the entire course of the day now from 7.35 until 2.55. Senior in-person students, a survey will be out this week for all of you to choose if you want to stay in person all day for the remainder of the year at our school. This is an attempt for us to give our seniors a chance to experience some sense of normalcy that started last March. So seniors, once again, you will have the option to attend all of our classes in person. Senior in-person students, if you want to, you may continue to follow your schedule as you are. Just remember, you're now going to have to log into all your classes at 735 or 1145. And a senior survey will also include an option for all of our students to add any conflicts this new schedule will create. We know we're gonna to have to be very innovative and problem solve to help alleviate these situations and we plan on doing that. Our teachers currently have Google Classroom and other online options, but we're gonna do everything in our power to make it work. Again, with these conflicts, our students are not gonna miss out on these learning opportunities, such as school to work, internship, classes they may be taking at RAC, our medical health profession students, and possibly employment. Again, the innovation and problem solving will exist for us to assist in this schedules. Our Career Center students, not losing hours at the Career Center, but a disadvantage of this new schedule, for the last part of the year, they will be attending BCTC twice a week instead of four times a week. We know that despite this decrease, when the school year concludes, our Career Center students had ample opportunities to attend in-person sessions at the Career Center. We will be sending out a separate communication to our parents of the BCTC students, and it will include a calendar similar to the one you can see here, a daily calendar that spells out exactly what our BCTC students will do for the remainder of the year. The main difference here, when they have to be here like Tuesday, March 22nd, uh, 23rd, when they have to attend their Governor Mifflin classes and they miss the Career Center, after the lunch break, they go home and they log into their Career Center class virtually. Again, looking at this schedule, if the Career Center opens on Wednesdays, our students will have more opportunities to attend their in-person program at the BCTC um, more times per week. I hope this clarifies the need we have to close out the year by getting our students in front of our teachers each day. I thank you for your time. Be safe.